All right, hey, how's it going? Um, so I had a question about how to find the area um, under a normal curve. <coughs> I'd see if I couldn't, uh, couldn't answer that for you guys. So let me get again. Um, so the question that was so that uh, somebody was asking, I think it was Joseph was asking me, if uh, if you want, needed to add 0.5 or subtract 0.5, um, and I said, well, it depends. And the easiest way to understand it is really to understand it. So this is, <clears throat> let's see, there are four basic types of problems you can have with a normal curve, right? When you're trying to find an area underneath. So this is a normal curve, bell curve, looks something like this. Um, and we have the mean here, right? Uh, mu, and then it's got a standard deviation. Or you can sometimes have the variance up there. But in any case, standard deviation is how I like to write it. Um, and now, under this curve, there, there are four kind of questions you might have. Um, you might have the question, which is, what is the area to the left of this? Right? This orange thing here. Um, you might have, what is the question, what is the area to the, to the left of something over here? Right? Which is this. Maybe there are six. You might have a question, what is the area to the right? of this, all this stuff over here, or what is the area to the right of something to the right of the mean, should I like say that over here, this area, and then <clears throat> you have what we can look up on a table, the easiest ones, right, which is, well there's one which is what is the area to the right here, within a region like this, from the mean to some value below it, and then you have the question that you actually can just look up on a table, which is what's the value over here. Now we can answer all of these questions with a few simple techniques. Really not that hard once you get the hang of it. First thing to keep in mind is that the area underneath the whole curve is 1. It's probability, so the total area is equal to 1. The second thing to keep in mind is uh, we know that it's symmetric. What that means is that, <clears throat> and okay, just that we're going to take advantage of the fact that it's symmetric, but we should mention that this is a shape, right? Because it's a shape, that's the way we should think of it. And when we talk about area, what we're talking about uh, is the size. We're going taking a shape, and we're finding the size of that shape. So it's never going to be negative, right? When we're talking about finding an area, so finding probability is about taking this shape and finding the size of a smaller part of that shape. Uh, the way I like to describe it is you could imagine a piece of construction paper, right? It's just a shape. It's like oak tag or construction paper or some other paper cut out. Um, the, shape, the size of that is never going to be negative, right? Because the size is how many inches, how many square inches that is or something. You can imagine that this as, as a shape that's fat in the middle, skinny at the tails. The total area is one, say, square inch. It's actually like 100%, and that's what this one means, like, the total area is 100%, <coughs> which is equal to 1.00, which is 1. That's the total area. Um, and it's a shape that happens to be symmetric. And can, what that means is when we draw a line down the middle, right, that, right, which is the mean, right, we, draw, we cut it right here, what we have is we have two halves that are the mirror image of one another, right? That means these two halves are the same in every way except that this side is negative and this side is positive relative to the mean, right? <coughs> That's, it's actually negative and positive on a standard normal curve if the mean is zero. Um, but that's the only difference is, is that we're away from the mean. But that also means that the areas are going to be the same. So the area of the left side is going to be one half of the total area, which is going to be 0 0.5 total for this whole left side. So you can take a bright color, it's a yellow color all over this stuff. This whole area here, this whole area is 0 0.5 all the way up to the middle. Because it's symmetric, that same thing holds true for the other side. This area over here is also 0 0.5. So both halves are the same size. So the question was, well, when do you add 0 0.5 and when do you subtract 0 0.5? So let me scroll down a little bit, actually. Let me get, get ourselves a little bit more space. <clears throat> okay, so when do we add 0 0.5? When do we subtract 0 0.5? Okay, well, let's use one example. Let's say we have a 
curve. Just make this up off the top of my head because it doesn't matter. It will work. And we know that it has a mean of, say, let's see, 10. A standard deviation of uh, 10. Might as well. We'll make it 10 and 10. And we want to know the area to the left of 5. So we have 5 here. And we want to know the area to the left of that. So we want to know the area, this pinkish, rose-colored area here. Okay. <clears throat> so we know our three things, right? We have a mean of 10. We have a standard deviation of 10. Those don't have to be the same in general. They are right now for convenience. X is equal to 5. And what we don't know is the area. P equals question mark. We want to find that rose area. Okay. So scroll down a little bit. Give ourselves a little bit more room. That's step one. We drew the picture. Step two is we relate it to the standard normal curve. Where's my pen? There we go. So I draw another curve now. It's kind of a crappy curve. You get the idea. It's bellish shaped. Uh, draw a dotted line here. So we have a mean of 0. Standard deviation is 1 on the standard normal curve. Dotted line here. We have a Z. Okay. Now what is that Z? Well, we don't know. But we know that once we figure that out, we want to find this orange area over here because that's the same as this rose area. They're going to be the same as long as we choose z correctly. Now we choose z as we use our score function. z equals x minus mu x over sigma x. We plug our stuff in. So z is going to be equal to 5, that's our x, minus mu x, which is 10 over 10. It's going to be equal to negative 5 tenths which is negative 0 0.5. OK. Now <clears throat> we have our z. Now we need to find our p. So this is where we bust out our uh, our z table. Let me open it up here because I haven't, I don't have it open right now. <clears throat> and I'll find it for you. Um, and because we have a z, what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at the, uh, we're going to look at the, the row in the column. What can you guys see? Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Or at least enough. OK. So what we're looking for is we're looking for z equals 0 0.50, which if you take start here, you go down to 0 0.5 and across to 0, 0, you see it's 0.1915 is what it gives us. Now, what it gives us is only the area here between 0 and positive z, right, positive 0 0.5. But because of symmetry, we know that that's the same as the area between 0 and negative z over here. So 0.1915 is also going to be the size of this area right here. Under, on, you know, under the curve there. So 0.1915 is what we have to... So what this says is that what our table tells us is the following. If z is equal to 0 0.5 or negative 0 0.5, the area between 0 and z is 0 0.1915 big. Now what that tells us is this area right here, 0 0.1915. Actually, it tells us this area right here, but because of symmetry, we know that they're the same. Where this is 0 0.5, this is negative 0 0.5, and because of symmetry, this is just a mirror. Right? The, the mean line is a mirror. So anything that's true on this side is true on this side because it's a mirror. Now, because that's 0 0.1915, we're looking for this orange area. But if you remember, we know that this whole area is 0 0.5. And so we're using logic to figure out what that orange is. If the whole area is 0 0.5, then that area right there is 0 0.1915. Then this over here must be the difference. It's what's left. It's, say we had a sheet that was half a square inch, and we cut off 0 0.1915 square inches. How many square inches would we have left? Well, we can figure that out just by subtracting. 0 0.1915. You can subtract. And you can use a calculator for this, although I highly recommend being good at this. You never know when you're going to be stuck on a desert island. You need to figure out how many coconuts are left. 3, 0, 8, 5 is what you get. And <clears throat> that's the area. The probability that you draw something less than 5 out of a normal distribution with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 10 is about 30%, 31%. That's the orange area, or the rose area in our original picture. What's this area? So that time we had to subtract 0.5 because we knew this. We knew this p, call this p, 
We knew this whole big thing, which is 0.5, and so we subtracted the white area from the total area to get the pink area. Now, when might you need to add? <coughs> okay, well, whenever you cross the mean, and you might need to add. So uh, let me erase this here. There we go, and I'll do this problem again. Uh, except now, instead of the area to the left, we're going to be looking to the area to the right. So we have the same curve. It's normal. Mean of 10. Standard deviation of 10. And we have a x of 5. And now, instead of wanting to know the, the area to the left, we want to know the area to the right. Okay. So you draw this picture. I'm doing this relatively fast because I'm at 11 minutes. I've got 4 minutes left. Should be plenty of time, but I want to make sure I fit it in this time. Okay. <clears throat> now, you relate to the standard normal curve. Draw this over here. Da -da -da. And our base, whatever our axis. Connect the means, 0, standard deviation equals 1. And down here we have our z. Now, I already know what this is because it's the same as the last one. But I'll write it again for you real fast. z equals x minus mu x over sigma x, which in this case is 5 minus 10 over 10, which is equal to negative 0 0.5. Now, we look this up on our table again to find an area. And again, we see oh, 0.1915 it is. Now that tells me, again, what this is, 0 0.1915, which by symmetry is what this is. Now, what I know now is I know this area in purple, right? just between here and here. I do also know the area over here, but I don't need that area so much. What I want to know is this plus this whole big right side. Okay. Now this is pretty convenient because I already know this whole big right side, right? I'm colored it in uh, bright green. This whole big right side in bright green is half of the total area under the curve, right? This is half of the curve. It's everything up to the mirror, right? The mean, the mean mirror right here. So this total area over here in green is 0 0.5 because it's half. And if this little addition to it is 0 0.1915, then in order to find the this total green area up here, the line, the olive green. What I need to do is I need to add them together. Right? Now, basically, I have two pieces of construction paper, one of which is 1 half square inch, and the other which is 0.1915 square inch. And I want to know what you get when you put them together. So 0 0.5000 plus 0 0.1915, add them together, 5196, 0.6915. So if the chance you're going to get something greater than 5, oh, it's about 69%. Easy enough. Now, <clears throat> so when do you add 0.5? Well, when you can look at the area and you can tell that it's more than half, you're going to make sure they have to add 0.5. When do you subtract 0.5? Well, you subtract 0.5 whenever you know, whenever you need a tail, usually. Whenever you just need a tail. If you need these kind of hump-shaped areas in the middle, these are the ones you look up on the table, right, between 0 and Z. But when you need a tail, well, then you find you take the part that the table tells you about, and you uh, you subtract that from from 0.5 to get the tail. So kind of a long answer, I guess, but hopefully that uh, makes it clear that there's not an easy answer except work the problems until you really understand um, what you're looking at. You're looking at an area under a curve. The total is one. Each half is 0.5, um, and the table tells you the sort of the middle sections. This here and this here. Uh, so you use the table to get the middle sections. You use your knowledge of, of the total area and the symmetry to work your way to, the, to figure out how to use the information you have to get what you need to answer the question. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the discussion board. Uh, thanks, and hope you guys are having a good weekend. Bye.